day one, I spawned into a huge explosion outside. I rushed out to see what was going on. I saw my sensei, Kakashi, and he was fighting the dark ninja, Orochimaru. He stopped fighting and looked directly at me. You stand no chance to defeat me. This world will be taken over once my boss acquires your inner beast. Inner beast? Naruto, run! I will hold him off. I didn't have time to question what was happening, so I started to run as fast as I could. Whoa, I'm so fast. Uh, too fast. There's a cliff! I landed, and suddenly, there were two of me? Hey, what are you doing here? The clone didn't listen. He ran directly to a nearby village. He frantically then began to break one of the walls of the wooden houses. I started to chase after him, but once I got close, he disappeared. What? All the commotion caught the attention of some of the villagers, and they all came storming over to me. Get out of here, you mother! You're pure evil, and no one wants to be near you. I'm sorry, it wasn't me. It was just a clone. Leave! You can't control yourself. Leave now! I ran off as fast as I could. I guess I wasn't welcome anywhere. I was running, running away from the village as fast as I could. Eventually, I got tired and stopped. I realized I had wood my clone had taken from the villager's home. I used it to make a crafting table and crafted a wooden pickaxe. After, I started to mine some stone to create some stone tools. Right when I thought I was alone, a group of zombies came out of nowhere and started to attack me. Wait, what? How are you guys not burning in the daylight? I had to act quick and fight them off with my sword. They hit me a few times and I noticed because I was a child, I only had five hearts. I did my best to keep them away. I was able to take them down, but I was so weak and I noticed that I was starving too. I began looking around for a local ramen shop, but I was in the middle of nowhere. I spotted a group of sheep. I guess this is gonna have to do for now. I ran up and used my stone sword to defeat them. I gathered their meat and wool and started to eat it. It didn't do much, but it was enough to get my hearts back and stop me from starving to death. I ran off to find where Kakashi was. I hope he's okay. On day three, I found Kakashi in the forest. It looked like he was out getting supplies. I walked up to him. Hey, uh, Kakashi sensei, I had a pretty rough encounter in the village over there. It seemed like everyone hated me. I don't know what I did to make everyone so hostile. That doesn't matter right now. The village needs our help and we must get these supplies back in order to rebuild. I began doing as Kakashi said and worked with him to collect wood. I finally asked them how much wood and stone the village needed and he told me that they needed 20 stacks of each. Kakashi, that's gonna take Take at least a hundred of me to gather all that for the villagers. Hey, that was an idea. Step back, Kakashi. I'm gonna try something. Wait, Fozo, you're not ready to use that. I didn't listen. So I used my shadow clone jitsu. And look, I made a clone. And then another. And another. Fozo, stop. You're not powerful enough for this. Oh, yeah? Well, look at me go. I continued to make clones. Until suddenly, I made a ton of them at once. Uh, oh, no. I started to feel weak. I think I'm gonna pass out. I came back to consciousness in a strange place. I was not sure where I was, but I looked around and I saw that the moon was completely red. I continued to look and I saw villagers, as far as I can see, standing perfectly still, frozen. I was terrified and confused. I turned around and saw a shadowy figure floating in the air. It was only a matter of time before Orochimaru perfected me. Reincarnation Jutsu. A reincarnation Jutsu? What's that? Who are you? What do you want from me? You are the key to unlocking my perfect world. A world where everyone is under my control and must do my bidding. All I need is you and your power. My power? What power? When the time is right, it will be mine. I will be the strongest ninja in the world. Okay, that's my cue to go. I began to panic and I started to run away from the shadowy figure. But whatever direction I ran in, he was in front of me again. You think you can run away from your destiny? Uh, he lunged at me. I woke up in a panic. Where, where was I? I looked around and I was back at my home in the Hidden Leaf Village. But just like Kakashi said, it was completely destroyed. I tried to find Kakashi. Oh, there he is. He was rebuilding a house. I ran to him and began telling him about my dream. There was this, this shadowy figure and he said he wanted to control everyone in the world. So, you've already started to see him. Who, Kakashi? I don't even know what's going on. Madara. I knew this day would come. He told me that he wanted to be the strongest ninja in the world. Well, I want to do that so I could defeat him. Good. He is pure evil and dangerous. So now it is time we begin your training. Because if he succeeds, then the entire world will be doomed. We began to train together. Kakashi explained to me the power I had accidentally used was the Shadow Clone Jitsu. I was definitely gonna have to work on controlling it, though. He showed me how he controlled it and then sent me off to practice it a few times. After some struggling, I was able to do it on command. Look, Kakashi, I did it. 
suddenly something started to happen and I grew into an adult Naruto. And look, I had 10 hearts too. After I upgraded, Kakashi and I spent the rest of the day putting all the fire in the village out. We also started to build up parts of the village as well. I even made myself a little home to stay in. That is more like it. I then began to ask him why all the villagers hated me and what Madara meant by my inner beast. In time, you'll understand why the villagers are afraid of you. You're too young and not strong enough now. I wasn't happy with Kakashi's answer. I decided to head off back toward the village to find out. On day six, I arrived at the village that had rejected me. I began searching around for any answers of what my inner beast was or why they had so much anger toward me. I snuck into a villager's house and looked around their chests, hoping to find any clues. I didn't find anything, but I was able to find a bunch of shurikens. These will surely come in handy while I master jutsu. I began to leave the village. As I was exiting, I saw the village suddenly was under attack. It was a raid from pillagers. The pillagers began swarming it and fighting their iron golems. I definitely did not want to be spotted here, but I had no choice. I jumped into action and started to use my sword to take down the pillagers. A ravager started to charge right at me. Uh, I had to use my shadow clone jutsu to help me fight. Me and myself were able to take down the ravager and the rest of the pillagers. Once everything was settled, I noticed all the villagers were outside. They all shouted at me. They called me a monster. So I began to leave, feeling even more defeated than I was when I first arrived. As I exited, I was stopped by one of them. She said the other villagers would come around eventually, and they just were afraid. She handed me a map and said if I traveled to the location on it, it would reveal more of my past to me. My past? I thanked the villager and set off to follow the map. On day seven, I made my way toward the location on the map. I should go find some food so that I'll have enough energy for the journey. I used my shurikens on a group of pigs to get some food. These things really do come in handy. I crafted myself a furnace and used it to cook the meat. As I continued to follow the map, Orochimaru ambushed me out of nowhere. Hello, Fozo. I think it would be your best interest to come with me. We have big plans for you. In your dreams. Orochimaru started to attack me, so I threw my shurikens at him, but he easily dodged them. Mm, those are cute, but you should try mine. He threw his own shurikens at me, and I was able to avoid the first wave, but one of them managed to hit me. Ow. Wow, I was really starting to feel funny. Thanks for making that so easy for me. Are these poison shurikens? That's not cool, dude. Uh, I woke up and found myself in... What is this? Is this like a lab? How did I get here? I kept looking around and I saw some of the villagers trapped in a cage. Oh, hey guys, I'll get you out of here. Ah, it's locked. I'll need a key to free them. I went down further into the lab and figured that this must be some sort of labyrinth. There are many paths that led into a dead end. This is annoying. There's gotta be something down one of these paths. Oh, nice, a light. I went down the path and it had stairs going down somewhere. It led me into a coliseum? Who has time to build this underground whoa a giant snake monster came out of nowhere and started lunging at me sorry buddy but i'm not snake food i threw my shurikens at the snake but it obviously did not deal that much damage the snake hit me with its tail and hurt me a lot i needed to take this monster down and fast i used shadow clone jutsu and made some clones but still it didn't do much the snake lunged and took all the clones down instantly it hit me with its tail again dealing more damage i've got to do something suddenly everything became blurry. And when I was back, what? What happened? I then noticed someone was watching me. It's the guy from my dream. What was he doing here? I hope you enjoyed the show. Out of nowhere, the floor beneath me gave out and I went falling. I went through the floor opening and saw Orochimaru. What am I doing here? And what's with all the monsters? What? You don't like that they're out during the day? Well, that's too bad. Let me out of here, you snake freak. Sorry, but I can't do that. You'll be fighting these monsters over and over until you're nice and strong. Nice and strong? Why does everyone keep saying that? What do you mean? Why are you making me do this? He didn't listen though, and we started a fight. I will not let you get away with all of this. Orochimaru was definitely way stronger than me because he was doing a lot of damage and fast. Finally, he hit me and knocked me aside. In time, in time time. Orochimaru left. I looked around the room and realized if he was right about me being stuck here forever. Suddenly, a blast happened and a figure appeared. Naruto, come quick. Kakashi? What are you doing here? No time. We need to get you out of here. Kakashi used his jutsu and opened a path for us to escape. Finally, we can leave all of this chaos behind. On day 10, we returned back to base to rest and recover. I had so many questions about the other day. Why did Orochimaru let me live? I can't just sit here and ponder. Come with me, Naruto. Let's build up your strength 
strengthen your appetite. Kakashi and I built a farm together. This should be able to feed both me and the nearby village. I walked over and saw that their entire village, though, was burned down because of the other night. They were trying to build up their houses again, but they weren't having much luck. I walked over to them and invited them back to our hidden leaf village. The villagers seemed iffy, but after they looked back at their home, they agreed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I took them back home and built up a few houses for them to stay in. A few of them seemed really happy, but the rest were still not having it. I hope to eventually win them all over when I am the strongest ninja in the world. After helping out the villagers, I showed Kakashi the map the village had given me a few days ago. I told him that this was the reason I was traveling alone when Orochimaru attacked me. I think you should go. Maybe this place will help you get stronger and even reveal more of your past. I think you're ready to learn. Thank you, Kakashi. I prepared to follow the map again. I gathered some food from our farm and set off. I was heading over to the location when I realized that I should stock up on tools. I went into a cave and searched for some iron. I quickly mined some and then searched for some coal. Once I found that, I placed out a furnace and smelted it. With the iron, I was able to make myself an iron set of tools. I used the leftover of it to craft myself a set of iron boots. As I left the cave, I spotted Orochimaru. Ah, not again. I needed to hide quick. I noticed he was with a villager. Where could he be taking him? Orochimaru continued on with a villager, and I came out of my hiding spot. Wow, that was way too close of a call. I continued on following the map. I hope it had the answers I was looking for. On days 13 to 14, I finally made it to the location of the map. It was some sort of strange temple. I wonder why the villager sent me here. I headed inside, and whoa, this place was crazy. After a quick look around, this place was a meditation site. Okay, uh, I sat down in the middle of the site and concentrated really hard. I felt my body shake, and when I opened my eyes, I was inside some kind of a dark world. I saw a giant red barred prison in front of me, and I saw a giant orange fox behind the bars. What is sent you here? What do you want with me, Fozo? How do you know who I am? And why are you here? What is this place? Where do you think you are? This is your mind. My mind? Can you answer my questions? Who are you? Who I am does not matter. And you can thank your dear old dad for why I am in prison. He put me here before disappearing. My dad? I never really knew him. What do you know about him? Enough of this silly banter. Get lost, you weakling. The giant fox roared, and suddenly, I was back in the meditation site. Wow, that guy really does not like me. I wonder, though, is this the inner beast everyone seems to be afraid of? On days 15 to 16, I returned to base and told Kakashi about what happened at the meditation site. I revealed to him that I had finally met my inner beast and began to understand why the villagers were so afraid of me. So it looks like you finally got to meet the nine-tailed fox, huh? And it looks like you already knew about him. Why are you keeping secrets? So what if I know? That's not the problem here. You need to continue training so that you'll get strong enough to face Orochimaru. Let's finally head to the dojo. But why, Kakashi? Why won't anyone tell me more? Kakashi brushed it off and moved towards the broken dojo. Oh, wow. Look at this place. It's completely destroyed. We took one look around and knew before we started more training, we needed to fix this place up. We got to work and it started to come along great. I was still upset about the nine-tailed fox and his displeasure with me. So I then began to construct a statue of the nine tails. I know he doesn't like me, but maybe if I make this for him, I can start to learn more. This will be a good spot to meditate and talk with him. Hopefully, one day, me and him will finally be able to connect. On days 17 to 18, an old villager came to Kakashi and I and asked for our help. She told us that her son is missing and she doesn't know where he is. She begged us to find him and bring him back to her. When she left, I revealed to Kakashi that I had seen Orochimaru with a villager a few days ago. Maybe that's who she was talking about. If that is true, then her son is in grave danger. I need to go and save him immediately. Uh, I'll come with you. I can help. It's my responsibility to. No, Fozo. You're not strong enough yet. You have great ambition, but you don't have the power to control yourself. I begrudgingly listened to him. It wasn't fair. Kakashi ran off to go. To show the villagers I was not the monster they thought I was, I decided to build up part of the village. I worked on expanding the farm and even brought back a group of cows. I built the cows a pen to live in, but it wasn't long until I grew tired of waiting around at the village. I looked around at the other villager and she seemed so sad that her son was missing. I decided to disobey Kakashi's orders. And plus, I knew that we would be stronger together. I ran after Kakashi and eventually caught up to him, maintaining a distance so I wouldn't be spotted. However, I was still close enough to help him if something were to go wrong. I continued to follow Kakashi toward Orochimaru's base, when suddenly, Kakashi was stopped by a loud growling noise. A few mutant zombies arrived out of the forest. 
face. They were huge and started to overpower Kakashi. I can't just watch helplessly while he's getting attacked. I need to do something. I threw some shurikens and damaged a couple of them. Loza, what are you doing here? I told you that you're not ready for this. That does not matter right now. We need to take care of these giant zombie things. I used my shadow clones and together we took the rest of them down. But Kakashi was not happy about it. You disobeyed my order. You need to go back to base now. No, Kakashi. It's my fault that the villager went with Orochimaru in the first place. And I'm going to help get him out of there. You need me. And I've already made up my mind. <sighs> We're almost there anyways. Come on, let's go. But stay close. Awesome. Okay, let's go save that villager. On days 21 and 23, we finally snuck into Orochimaru's base. We're this close to saving that villager. We saw Orochimaru walking our way, so we hid behind some rocks. Let's follow him. He might lead us to the villager. We followed him inside the base until he led us into a room. And look, here they all are. He must have been capturing villagers for a while. Don't worry. We're gonna get you all out of here. Suddenly, there was screaming in the other room and footsteps. Well, though, we need to hide, and fast. We hit again, and Orochimaru appeared with a zombie. Where did that come from? When they walked away, we came out of hiding and tried to free the villagers. Come on, come on, open already. Fancy seeing you guys here. Bozo, run. I'll take care of them. Kakashi used his jutsu on him, but it didn't look like it hurt that much. Then, Orochimaru used his, and it dealt a lot more damage. He's running out of hearts. Stop hurting my sensei. I got really mad, and I felt myself changing. Suddenly, I transformed into the beast from my meditation. What? But as I transformed, I blacked out. Oh, where am I? Not at Orochimaru's base? Is that? I suddenly noticed the beast from my meditation, and he was destroying the village. Why would he do that? Someone needs to stop him. Right on cue, there was a man who was running towards him. Wait a minute, is that my father? He suddenly summoned a ball of air and threw it at the beast. It must be my father. But who is that other lady with him? My mom. There was also a baby that was near both of them. I think I'm in the past. The beast disappeared as it got close to the baby. This must have been what the beast was referring to. That baby must be me. Suddenly, there was a huge flash, and I woke up back inside our base. Kakashi, you're okay. I had the craziest dream. Happy to see that you're doing okay, Fozo. What happened, Kakashi? Where are all the villagers at? Are they okay? You released the beast inside you, and it used its power to stop Orochimaru. You were out of control. The villagers we saved were grateful, but they were terrified of your power. Great. Now I'm back to square one. I need to control the beast if I want the villagers to trust me again. I went to the statue of the fox and continued building it. I need more answers. After I finished building, I sat down and began to meditate. I knew I needed to learn more about him and what happened with my family. On days 27 to 29, I began to meditate and entered my mind once again, where the beast was held. You again. I need answers. I use a special power inside of me, and I think you have something to do with it. You mean my power, and yes, it was nice to be free once again. Free again? Wait, so when I used that power, I unleashed you? Who do you think defeated all those giant snakes? It surely wasn't you. I thought back, and he was right. It must have been Nine Tails I accidentally unleashed all those days ago. Listen, weakling, I'm the Nine Tailed Fox. I was created to hurt people, and I would have kept doing that too if it wasn't for your stupid parents who trapped me inside of you. Now be gone. You're starting to annoy me. I woke up back at the statue. Dang it. What am I supposed to do if I can't use my own powers? I need to find a way to control it. I went to the base and told Kakashi about my situation. Your own power, huh? Actually, I think I might know someone who could help. You do? Yes. There is a toad called Fukasaku. He taught me everything I know about my energy. Here, Fuzo. Take this map. Find Fukasaku. And tell him that I sent you. Be careful, though. You're going to be on your own for this one. I took the map from Kakashi and prepared for my journey to find Fukasaku. I went into a cave and mined some more iron. I used the iron to craft myself a chest plate, pants, and helmet. I left the cave and followed the map to find the toad. I began my journey when suddenly the day turned to night instantly. Standing in front of me was also the guy from my dream. So, you're the guy that I'm having all these visions about. Greetings, nine-tailed boy. I am Madara and you are still weak. That is not true. I'm gonna be the most powerful ninja this world has ever seen. Good that you're training starts now. He began to attack me. He used his fire jutsu, and it dealt some serious damage. I used my shadow clone technique, but it wasn't very effective. Madara used a huge flame, and it took out all of the clones. You are too weak, boy. As long as you don't use 
use the nine tails power to the fullest, you will only suffer against me. Am I really gonna have to depend on that fox? Oh well, let's try. I tried to summon the beast from within me, but I was unable to. Well, there goes that plan. He continued to attack me, and I realized I was only down to a few hearts. Continue to grow strong, because once you are dead, you will be used to I will never help you! He <laughs> laughed and used his power to send me flying. On days 33 to 35, I landed in an ice biome. I barely have any hearts left, and I know that I need to regain my strength. Suddenly, I was attacked by some strange dog creatures. I didn't have enough hearts to fight back against them, so I began to run. They chased after me, caught on my tail. I was gonna have to try and lose them. I spotted a cave, hoping they wouldn't follow me inside. I watched as the creatures ran right past the cave. Phew, that was a close one. I began to explore the cave, looking for anything I could. The cave was dark, but luckily, I still had some torches on me. I began to light up the area. And to my surprise, there were some mushrooms on the cave floor. Well, might not be ramen, but it still will definitely get my hearts back. I collected some mushrooms and used them to craft some mushroom stew. I began eating it, and it restored my hunger and health. I could feel my strength returning to me. Wow, that really hit the spot. Before leaving, I looked around and found some diamonds. There weren't many, so I had to be smart about what I crafted. I decided to use them to craft a diamond sword. Maybe this would come in handy next time I fought Madara. I continued to follow the map and ran out of the ice biome. I finally made it to the location where the toad is supposed to be. But there is a slight problem. This place is full of toads. How am I supposed to know which toad is going to train me? I ventured throughout the toad village. Where could he be? Suddenly, I saw a small green toad with a cloak around him near a pond. Yep, I think this guy might be the guy. Hey, do you know uh, Kakashi by any chance? He told me he did. And that this place would be a place where I can unlock more of my power. So you're this Fojo ninja that Kakashi Boyo told me about. Name's Fukasaku. And yes, it's possible for you to tap into a stronger side of yourself. Awesome. What's first? Fighting a giant toad? Some cool new techniques? Meditation. Meditation? You need to meditate at a different location and concentrate. Do that and you'll unlock your power in no time. Aw, oh, man. You gotta be kidding me. Where to first? He pointed me in the right direction. I traveled to the top of a mountain and started to meditate. I don't feel anything. I guess I should try somewhere else. The next location I went to was a waterfall. I started to meditate in the middle of the waterfall and still felt nothing. I returned back to the pond to talk to Fukusaku. Nothing's working. Is meditation even going to make me stronger? You need to concentrate your energy if you want to reach your next power. Sage mode. Sage mode? Fukusaku told me to try using one of the shadow clones and meditate with that. Huh. I'll give it a try. I used my shadow clone jutsu and the clone headed back up toward the mountain. Once there, we started to meditate and I started to feel a tingling sensation. Oh, uh, what's happening? Happening. I opened my eyes, and I realized that I was in my next phase. Sage mode. Yes, I finally did it. I can let out my next power. Rasengan. I feel so much stronger now. On days 39 to 41, I thanked Fukusaku and left the Toad Village to go back to base. I arrived at the base and told Kakashi about my sage mode. Look what I can do now. I went into sage mode and created a bunch of shadow clones, and with them, I started to expand the base more. Now I can have a lot of the heavy lifting. That's impressive, Fosa. While you were away... Orochimaru's been busy. What do you mean by that? Kakashi told me that he's attacked a nearby sand village. I would go handle it myself, but my hands are tied protecting our village. Does that mean you want me to go and take care of it? Kakashi nodded and told me he thinks I am ready. Don't worry, Kakashi. I won't fail you. Before I went to go save the village, I should definitely build up my strength and armor. I gathered some sheep from the farm and made some mutton to eat. After that, I went to a nearby cave and mined some more diamonds. I completed my set of diamond tools and used a leftover to craft some diamond boots. This should be enough. I left the cave and headed out towards the sand village. I arrived at the village that was under attack. But to my surprise, nothing seemed out of the ordinary. I made my way inside, and the villagers were confused as to why I was here. They were grateful for my arrival. They heard many rumors of my powers and the help I had been doing at the Greenleaf Village. It was a nice change to be welcomed instead of immediately hated when I showed up. Since there was no trouble here, I started to get ready to leave when Orochimaru arrived. Perfect. You are here. What are you doing here? Our plan has worked. Plan? What plan? The plan where I defeat you again. He began to attack me. I started to use my new power on him, and I can tell that I was at least powerful enough to hurt him. So you've become more powerful. <laughs> 
He continued to attack me, and I started to get angry. I felt this surge of power running through my body, and I transformed into the Nine Tails Fox. Wait, but I'm still here. I didn't pass out this time. Unfortunately, I lost complete control of my body, and I began to destroy the village. Oh, no, no. Please, please stop. Silly boy, our plan has once again succeeded. Orochimaru started to flee the village, and as much as I wanted to go after him, I couldn't control myself and continue to destroy the rest of the village. On days 45 to 46, I returned back to normal and realized the destruction I'd caused. What have I done? All these villagers don't have a home now, and it's because of me. I'm so sorry, guys. Uh, I gave them coordinates to the Hidden Leaf Village in case they needed a new place to stay, and I left. I then returned back to the base, embarrassed with myself. I continued to work on the Ninetailed statue. I needed to get my mind off things and talk to Ninetails. He can't destroy the world like this. I finished giving the statue another upgrade and sat down to meditate. I arrived at the Red Prison, where Ninetails was being held. He looked at me, smiling. I've seen that statue of me you were working on. Thanks, Weekly. I will now allow you to speak for now. Listen, Ninetails. I've gotten a lot stronger since the last time we spoke. But what's the problem with you? Why would he do that to that village? First off, my name's Karama. And second, I have no obligation to help you and the villagers in your trivial matters. Okay, Karama. Nice to meet you. But I think it would be better to work together to help people instead of them fearing us. Those humans have done nothing but use me. They never helped. Why should I help them? This conversation is meaningless now. Goodbye. Wait, I'm not done speaking yet. Ugh. Great. He kicked me out. After my talk with Kurama, I returned to the base to talk with Kakashi. I told him about Orochimaru and what had happened at the village. I am disappointed. Not with you, but myself. I shouldn't have pushed you so hard. He was just too powerful, and his attacks had made me angry. I didn't want to use the nine cells, but he came out anyway. I knew you required more training, but I believed with your newfound power you could control it. Don't worry, Kakashi. We can still make things right. Kakashi and I began to gather materials together to bring to the village. We also gathered some of the food from our farm to bring it to them, as well as seed to help with the crops. We set off toward the village, but Kakashi stopped me along the journey as night was falling. Uh, look at the moon. This is not good. I looked up and noticed that the moon was red again. It had to be Madara. He must be gaining more strength. We have to act quickly. On days 51 to 53, we returned to the village I had destroyed. The villagers came out of the village and refused to let me inside. Kakashi defended me and told the villagers it was not my fault at all, but also his as well. I apologized to them again, and we told them that we were here to make things right. The villagers were reluctant, but eventually agreed to let us inside. Once inside, Kakashi and I really got to see the aftermath of the destruction. This was no place to live. We invited them back to our base. They agreed, and we all traveled back. Once we were back, Kakashi and I began to work on some new buildings for the desert villagers. We worked together and rebuilt several of the houses. After that, I went to our farm and began to make it much larger. We were even adding more types of seeds. I crafted the wheats I had brought into bread and began to hand it out to the villagers. I knew this would keep them from starving while the new crops grow back. I was approached by one of the village elders. Fozo, we are sorry for how we treated you after your fight with Orochimaru. I understand. I cannot control myself, and I destroyed half your village. Yes, but without you, Orochimaru would have destroyed it all, and who knows what else. I thank the villager for being so understanding of what had happened. It felt good to be liked by them once again. On days 54 to 56, I woke up. As I was getting ready to leave, the village elder approached me again. We built you something as a thank you. He dropped me some explosive kunai. Wow, this could really come in handy. I thanked the villager and headed out. As I was traveling, I spotted Orochimaru. He looked like he was performing some kind of strange jutsu. Hey, what are you doing? Ah, Fuzo. Return for more punishment. It is you who will be punished. <laughs> Orochimaru continued his jutsu, and he summoned massive skeletons. They began attacking me, shooting massive arrows and swinging large hammers at me. I used my diamond sword when they were close, and used my Rasengan, as well as kunai, to hit them at range. A few more hits, and I was able to take them down. While I was fighting the skeletons, I hadn't noticed that Orochimaru had escaped. He must fear that I'm getting more powerful than he is. On days 57 to 59, I returned back to my base. I was extremely excited about taking down Orochimaru's minions, but I wanted to make sure I would be able to take him on. I went to a nearby cave and began searching for diamonds to complete my diamond armor. I searched the cave and eventually was able to find them. And look at that. There's my full set of diamond armor. Afterwards, I returned back home and all the villagers were extremely happy to see me. The other village had talked to them about me defending them. One villager stopped me as I was passing. 
<laughs> he explained to me that his son had some kind of sickness and needed a special medicine that could be found at a nearby river. Sickness? This had to be related to Madara and Orochimaru. I knew it was my duty to help all those in need, so I headed off. I arrived at the river and began searching for the medicine. The villager told me that it was something I would be able to find at the bottom of the river. He said it almost looked like a bottle. I then dove down and saw a bottle on the floor of the ocean. I picked it up, and sure enough, it was the medicine he was looking for. I began traveling back to the village to give the villager the medicine he needed. I returned to my base, and to my shock, it was swarming with undead mobs. How did this happen while I was gone? The villager from earlier approached me. Hey, uh, I caught the medicine at least. But the villager didn't answer. Instead, he started to levitate and then revealed himself to be Madara. It was a trick to get me away from my base so that he could attack. You foolish boy. This place will suffer because of you. He began to attack me, and he was still very powerful despite my diamond armor and upgraded forms. You are almost ready. I just need to draw it from you. He continued to use jitsus on me that I'd never seen before. He hit me again, and I fell to the ground, feeling so weak. The time has come. I thought this was the end until Kakashi showed up and began to attack him. Naruto, you have to get these people out of here. You're not strong enough to fight him alone. I can hold him off. Now get going. I did as my sensei commanded. You it's place that he used a jitsu and hit Kakashi back. Kakashi fell to the ground, extremely weak. No, continue your training, Naruto. You will defeat him. Kakashi, no. On days 63 to 65, the villagers and I went out to hide in a massive tavern. We made campfires and small huts to stay in. I was feeling defeated and mourned the loss of my sensei and friend. I decided I would construct a monument for him next. He was truly my best friend after all. I needed a way to remember him. Some time had passed and I returned to our base with the villagers and saw how much had been destroyed. Madara truly was a monster. I began to work with some of the villagers to rebuild their homes so that the people would have a place to stay. Some of the villagers had hid while Madara and his army had attacked. He explained to me that while some were lucky enough to hide away, others were taken. He must be bringing them to Orochimaru and his experiments. I made a promise to the villagers that I would get all their people back. I just need to be stronger and understand how to control my powers. I decided it was time I confronted Kurama again. I worked to finish my statue. I was hoping that this would please Kurama and that he would finally understand I needed his help or the world would be doomed. I was back within myself and walked toward Kurama to speak with him. I hope my statue of you is pleasing. I do. I know why you're here, Fozo, and my answer is yes. I will help you. You will? But why? I thought you hated me. Our relationship is a complicated situation, but I will not stand to see Madara succeed. Kurama and I finally came to an understanding after days and days of the opposite. He told me that we would also need the help of his father, the Sage of Six Paths. If we can convince him to help, we'll definitely be able to defeat Madara. Now close your eyes and meditate with me. After opening Kurama's prison, he and I began to meditate together. Suddenly, he and I were teleported to a new world. It was dark and empty. There was no one in sight until we approached a figure completely cloaked in white. Welcome, Fozo. Your world must be in grave danger if you've come to find me. I told the Sage of Six Paths about the situation going on with Madara, but also the relationship Kurama and I had developed recently. So, Madara is trying to use his hypnosis ability to take control. That's not good at all. So that's what he's planning on doing? He's trying to control everyone and everything in the world with his mind. So, Mr. Six Paths, would you be willing to help us? All right, Fozo. I'll lend you my strength. Now, close your eyes. I did as he said. I felt a great power rising within me. I opened them, and I was back at my statue. I had a new suit and felt more powerful than ever. I did it. With this new form, I'll definitely be able to defeat my enemies. On days 69 to 71, I need to save these villagers. I said goodbye to the villagers and ran off as fast as I could toward Orochimaru's base. I arrived at Orochimaru's base and quickly made my way inside. I fought through some of his minions, but they were no match for me at this point. I entered the prison where all the villagers were being held captive and Orochimaru was waiting for me. This ends now, you monster. Sage of six paths. How is this possible? Because I told you, I'll become the most powerful ninja in the world and you can't stop me. Orochimaru began to attack me with his jitsu and I realized that I was fast enough to evade most of his attacks. Attacks. I started to fight back, getting close. This cannot be! I could tell each hit was dealing massive damage to him. He ran off! I almost had him! He was so weak. I was upset that I was unable to finish him, but I looked around at all the villagers who were celebrating my victory. I freed all of them, and we began to travel back home. I made it back to base with the freed villagers, and I was surprised from applause and cheering. 
I was surrounded by them. All of them thanked me and praised me for saving them. The village elder approached me and said that we should throw a party in honor of me. Really? Uh, a party? Yeah, that sounds amazing. Let's do it. Everyone from the Hidden Leaf Village entered into my base, and we all started to celebrate. Some of the villagers even gave me some health potions. I can't tell you guys how much this means to me. I'm gonna do what I can to save the world. On days 75 to 77, I was woken up by the sound of screaming villagers. I ran outside, and a villager was running toward my base. He said that the Hidden Leaf Village is being under attack by some kind of undead monster. This has to be Orochimaru's doing. I quickly made my way to the village and saw that there were undead everywhere. I used my Shadow Clone Jitsu to make some clones so I can be better at fighting them off. The clones threw explosive kunai at the undead and took down a number of them. All while this chaos is going on, I saw Orochimaru was watching from the exit. These guys weren't as tough now that I had the power of the Sage of Six Paths. I had used my Rasengan technique to take down the rest of the undead monsters. You are next, Orochimaru. He ran out of the village and I followed him. Where do you think you're going? I followed him right on his tail as he was trying to make it back to his base. He must have realized that he was not getting away because he stopped. There's nowhere left for you to run. Run. I only led you here so that I could finally be rid of you. Orochimaru used a poisonous attack on me. That took a lot of my hearts away. What kind of technique was that? I feel so weak. Yes, Fuzo. Soon yours and the Nine Tails power will finally belong to me and Madara. Not if I have anything to say about it. Suddenly, I felt a surge of power and I turned into the Nine Tails Fox. How is this possible? You can't control this power. I used Rasengan on Orochimaru and he was taking a lot of damage. This is it, Orochimaru. Say goodbye. I used my final Rasengan on him and dealt the final blow. Farewell, you snake. I transformed back into my normal form and I made my way from the grassy plains and returned to base. On days 81 to 85, I returned back home. The village got a little messed up from those undead monsters, so I created some shadow clones, and we built back up all the buildings that were destroyed. After fixing the buildings, I noticed that all the villagers were looking terrified at the sky. <sighs> They told me that even though it's a brand new day, the sky hasn't turned back into day. Oh no. This was just like my vision. Madara, he's powerful. I have to put a stop to him quick. I just hope I'm not too late. While I was searching, I noticed there was a large beam of light that was pointing towards the red moon. Maybe if I follow this light, I'll find him. I ran toward it as fast as I could. As I continued, I got attacked by some rock golems. Rock golems? Why are you guys attacking me? I saw that the golems' eyes were the same color as the red moon. I need to end this now. I summoned some shadow clones. We use air blast attacks to defeat the rest of the golems. Man, that was exhausting. I need to gain my strength back if I want to face Madara. I continued my journey and found a field full of sheep. Great. I'm starving. I've killed some of the sheep with my diamond sword and cooked some mutton to eat. When I finished eating, I decided to stay in the field for a bit and meditate. I felt my energy rise back to normal through meditation. On days 91 to 94, I finally made it to where the beam of light was. It was in the middle of a rocky biome. I kept looking around the area and approached a giant tree. It was sprouting something. Thing red, just like the red moon. That is far enough, Fozo. Madara, what's this with the big tree in the center of this place? Once that tree blooms, this world will finally be under my control. Well, thanks for the intel. Now I know how to save the world by destroying that tree. I summoned some shadow clones to attack Madara. The clones didn't do any damage. Oh no, the tree's fully bloomed, and he knocked me out of the rocky biome. I landed back inside my base. I looked up at the sky, and it instantly changed from night to day. This is strange. Range. I should go take a look around the village. I run around and notice that none of the villagers were moving. They stood still motionless. I tried talking to the villagers, but they weren't responding. They were just staring at the sky. I looked up at the sky and saw that there was no longer a red eye, but a white one instead. He's hypnotized everyone so that he could take all their energy for himself. I stopped staring at it and ran back into my base. I don't know what to do. I need to talk to Kurama. On day 99, I went to the Kurama statue and sat down to meditate. I went inside my mind and there was Kurama waiting for me. What's wrong, Fozo? All is lost. I failed to stop Madara, and now the world is under his control. Fozo, you accomplished so many things in the past few days. You've been in situations just as dire as this one, but you've always to manage to find a way to win. You're right, Kurama. There were plenty of times where it looked like we were doomed, but I managed to beat the odds against me. With my confidence boosted, Kurama and I both began to meditate. Energy was bursting inside of me, and I felt like I could take on the world. Now go save the world, Fozo. I believe in you. I returned to the real world. From my meditation, it was now or never to save the world. I set off to find Madara. On day 100, I arrived at a massive structure where the beams of light had been traveling to. I walked inside to confront Madara. Ah, there you are, Fuzo. 
So you were the only person left I needed to absorb. Yeah, we'll see about that. I summoned a single shadow clone, and that clone transformed into Kurama. Now we can take down this guy together, Fozo. Kurama attacked Madara with a blast attack. Madara hit us with a giant flame attack, and we were down for the count. Kurama, what do we do? Here, take this. Suddenly, I started overflowing with tons of energy. Where did this come from? I had a meditation clone back in the base. Now let's take him down. I concentrated all my energy and launched a giant Rasengan and Madara. The white eye turned back into the sun. We did it. 